This means you can add movement and visual ambiance to your live stream backgrounds. This means you can take the experience and branding for your shows even further. Unfortunately, this also means you'll see streamers go way too far, reminiscent of early 2000 PowerPoint animations. That goes too far. Nobody wants that. You're telling me. <laughs> the addition of video backgrounds from StreamYard allows us to upload either a three meg GIF or an MP4 video, 60 seconds or shorter with a max file size of 200 meg. Those sizes are a problem. More on that later. Video background will play on a continuous loop with no audio. StreamYard joins Restream, EVMux, and Ecamm who have long had video backgrounds. It's an option, an option you might not use, that would be fine. But if you do use it, I wanna show you some best practices and what to avoid in this video. So here we are in StreamYard looking at the studio. We are um, in a familiar space. I want you to take notice of the background that's on the screen right now. This is something that I designed in Kava. We're gonna actually go look at that in just a second. But this background has a static image on it uh, because that's all we could do before. We could only post or upload static images to StreamYard. We now can do more. So uh, we can go to the brand section here, brand. Go to the brand section on the extreme right side of the studio. Click on brand. You have all of your branding options, the color, your theme, your logo, your overlays, your video clips. I'm going right down to where it says background. And so background is here. Video backgrounds are now supported in the studio. You can see that this is a, an, a little notification that says new. I haven't even closed that out yet. I wanted you to see that. Hopefully you see it in your studio too. Um, I'm also going to hover over this background question mark here, which gives us a little more information. You can you can set an image, you can do a video, you can do a GIF as a background. Um, backgrounds will not be visible in all layouts. If you make your camera full screen, you won't actually see the background. But then it also goes on to say the max file size, max video size, max video length, and then all some of the file formats that it will accept. MP4 being the only video file format that it accepts. Keep that in mind. In here, like I said, we have my background for my show, the Convos and Collab show, and you can see what that looks like. Uh, but we're going to take a look at this in Canva. Uh, that's where we are right now. This is Canva, right? And so the same background, same exact background, only now I can actually move things around. I can move this whole thing because that's a group of, of items that I've already set up. I can actually click and get rid of the background itself you can see that now the background is transparent um and then you can uh take that background let's let's uh let's actually uh, undo that <laughs> but we can then take that background or replace that background with a video which is exactly what i've done um in this design and in this design all right these are two different designs the exact same setup and overlay as this top one, except these are not static images. And so if I click on this one and click play, you'll see that that is actually playing a video in the background. Um, we'll pause that. And if I come down to this other one, you click play, and you'll see that that's actually playing a video in the background. This is a seven second video. The one above it is a 60 second video. And the way that we would download these, you would want to download them individually. You'd come in here to share, um, click on download where it says download right here, download, and you want to set, select your quality. Um, and again, you have that 200 meg limitation. So hopefully you don't hit that, but you want to make sure you set your quality and this is what will determine the size of the video. And of course the quality of the video as well. So MP4 is what is recommended by Canva, but it's also the only file format that is accepted by StreamYard. So for that particular streaming platform, this is what you do. If you're using something else like an Ecamm or a Restream or even EVMux, there is a little bit more flexibility, but the same MP4 video file will work. So just to keep it simple and uniform, we're gonna use this. Um, you can set your quality, and then you wanna select which actual file you wanna download. So I'm working with page two and three, and even though I want both files, <clears throat> I do need to download them individually. So 
uh, simply come through here and select page two like that, say done, and then you click download. Um, same process for page three, and you would have those files downloaded to your desktop, which you could then quickly upload into StreamYard, which is what I've done here. So I'm gonna run that process again. I'm gonna hit the plus sign. I'm gonna click on add files. And that brings up my, my, uh, my computer. I can go to my downloads folder and you can see this is the video that we played just a second ago in Canva, all right? Now, one of the things I wanna do real quick, I'm not gonna upload this, it was already in the system. But what I do wanna do is go back to Canva real quick and I'm gonna do a quick search for some videos. Um, we, if we duplicate this page just by simply clicking on this button here, you can see that it says duplicate when I hover over it, duplicate page. That allows me to get a full copy of the first page. So now I have this page duplicated. I hit, click on the, select the background, which has that static image and get rid of it. So that image is gone now. So you just have the lines, you have my logo at the top, you have kirkarnugent.com, you have the Convo Color Labs bug in the bottom right corner. Simply go over to videos in Canva. So this videos icon, you can click on that. And what I would recommend doing is whatever scenario you're looking for. And in this case, I think I did something like nature, but I always add loop. The idea is you want something that's not going to be jarring when it starts over. StreamYard or whatever platform you're using is gonna play that video over and over again. And in order for that not to be jarring, as in order for people not to notice that there's this visible start over, right? Cause it's looping maybe a 10 second or 20 second or even 60 second video. At whenever that thing loops, you don't want your audience's attention to be called to it. Uh, similarly, you also don't want anything that is too busy, that's moving too fast. And so in here, you have a number of options and you can actually just mouse over them and it'll start to play. And give you some idea of, you know, what that's going to look like. And so some of these do work, you know, some of them are good, but you can see the options that I selected. This is one of the ones that I selected here. You can see that that's an eight second video and um, I don't see the other one, but it might be there somewhere else. Here's a, a 60 second video underwater. That could be cool. And again, you want to pick something that's going to be it's going to complement your brand, something that's not going to be too, too much uh, going on. Here's 11 second video and the tree is moving, but the, you know, not too, too much is moving there. That could be something that's good. Once you have it on the back or on the canvas on in your design, you do want to right click it and uh, make sure you say replace background so that all your design comes to the front. And for those who may want to uh, utilize some of the tips and tricks we've used before for StreamYard in terms of having that white border around your camera, you would simply go into your elements um, option, grab a square or some kind of a shape, make that white and then you can simply put that wherever you would want it on screen uh, to, to, to mimic what you would want for your camera, how you want your camera to be on screen. I always leave a little space at the bottom here for the comments to come in. And then here we can just duplicate that. So I'm gonna just do control C, V, V, right? We got one there, one here, and that even gives you the little sizing in between them so now you have those three on there. So we have these three. We have a background that is video. It's not too busy. Uh, we can see the leaves moving, a little bit of light and some of the grass moving there on the bottom. That will cause somebody to stop and be like, oh, this is a pretty cool setup. So in fact, we're gonna actually go ahead and download this one since we created it together. Download button, um, gonna select the current page. See that what I did there, select current page. I'm keeping it as MP4. I'm going to select 1080p in terms of my quality and uh, we're gonna go with that video. So we hit download and down done and hit download and that video will download into my computer. Back over here in StreamYard, I have uploaded two of these uh, videos already 
and I want to just simply add my camera to the screen. Um, we're going to make it smaller. That's way too big. Um, and then we can simply add this other background and there you have it. This is the background that we just talked about that we just used from Canva that we just exported from Canva inside StreamYard now as a background for my live show. And it, it's a very subtle movement. The, the waves are there. There's that sun in the background. It just kind of calls people attention to it. What you don't want to do is to overdo the movement, overdo the activity of the video that you've chosen in the background. And again, this one is a seven second video. It's playing on a loop, no audio, and it has not, you know, it doesn't really call your attention to it when it starts over. So you can't even tell like, when does the seven seconds start again? I mean, you had, if you look closely, you could probably tell because it's, it, there is a little bit of a start stop. But when you at, when you search in Canva for videos that are going to be on a loop, it does kind of help you with giving you options that are going to be able to be looped without noticing what's going on there. And I can just simply click the next background and that takes me to another background altogether. And there you have yet another uh, scene there again, subtle in terms of its movement and its color um, and how it kind of, it's, it's kind of a gradient gives a totally different effect to the live show, but yet it, it doesn't necessarily, uh, it's not necessarily distracting. It doesn't pull from what it is you're doing on camera, which is of course always going to be the main event. So now let's go ahead and upload this last file that we just downloaded a second ago that we created that also has the additional squares on top. Notice I didn't even bother to size them. Um, and those squares are, are gonna be placeholders for where I put three cameras. So now here we have this set up like this. I'm going to select this uh, mod three person crop. I'm gonna edit the layout. That allows me to take a look and see some of the things that are here. Uh, we're going to get this and take get rid of it. We get rid of that. Let's move this to where we can kind of format it onto the screen there. You see what I'm doing um, there. And then we move this up. Boom and probably need to move this a little bit up so that we have, you can also use your, your, your arrows to, um, to adjust them as well. Sometimes it's easier to get rid of the other f files that are there so that you can duplicate the one that you have once you have it set right. Once you have it set the way you want it, you have that thing set right, you can now just duplicate it. So I'm gonna duplicate it once, put the other one over here. You see how the red lines lined it up? Let's duplicate that again, put that over here. You see how those red lines lined it up? And we are good to go. I'm gonna say save. I'm gonna update the layout. And now we have that set up. Now you, you may wonder, okay, why don't you have, <laughs> why, why isn't your other cameras there? I only have one camera added right now. I'm going to actually add yet another camera in by going to extra camera and say, share that camera in. Let's add that to the screen. And you can see that other camera is already on there and it adds right in to the right place. The video is playing in the background, but you may not have noticed it because it's subtle. It, it, it just kind of adds a little component a little pop it still has my branding on it because i put my branding on top of the video in canva it really helps to present the whole experience to your viewers in a way that they could not have experienced it before video backgrounds is a nice touch but you do want to do it right and i hope that this video helped you to get there that's that's these, these are some of the things that we want to make sure you incorporate do not be afraid of them test them out ask your audience well, what do you think? Uh, should we should we keep this? Should we go with it? We, we're using video backgrounds today. Let me know in the comments what you think and then continue on with providing immense, incredible, ridiculous value. This is what it looks like in Restream when we upload the same video into the system. You can see over here under design, if I go down to the backgrounds, this is the background 
here in Restream that I have added to, that we created in Canva. And this is what it looks like when, my, when I put my camera on top. Restream doesn't have custom layouts, so I can't necessarily adjust the design, but this uh, gives you a look and a feel. And of course, it, it, it confirms that this functionality was here in Restream long ago. Similarly, this is the functionality here in EV Mux. I've uploaded the same video that we designed in Canva here in EV Mux. To be clear, this is not even a pro scene. This is just straight up EV Mux um, in a dynamic scene, which mimics what you get from e from a uh, StreamYard. And you can see what that looks like. I can add my camera to the scene and you have that there like that. Again, if you do set it up in pro scenes and you have a lot more functionality to be able to adjust the camera in whatever way you want, put it in a corner, set it off to the side, and you can have you know this kind of design and this kind of uh, functionality for your live show in EV Mux. Couldn't do, uh, finish out the video without at least showing you what it looks like in Ecamm. And here is um, that, a video, uh, uh, using that same video background in Ecamm. Only thing with Ecamm, I, I don't need to add those borders in like I did in Canva. I don't have to because, well, <laughs> I can add the, that border in on any item that I add in the system anytime I want to. So here you can see I can make that border a little bit thicker and that that's all there. And I, if I want, I can actually in Ecamm take my video, the camera itself, as long as I unlock it, I can take the camera itself, size it to where the way I, way I want it. And once I have that where I want it, I can then just option drag and that will give me another video, another, another camera and option drag again. And that'll give me another camera. Of course, they're not sized right, but the idea of being able to just on the fly do that, game changer. These are the kinds of things that you have available to you. And again, it still has that same background, that same, that same movement. It's not as in your face, it's subtle, it's in the background, but yet it calls people attention like, man, what's going on there? What does he have going on? And, and that's what use, utilizing video in your background is all about. And we're excited to see that StreamYard has joined the rest of the crew by adding that functionality. You don't want your viewers getting seasick. You also don't want their attention pulled away from you. These functions and features are meant to help you grab attention quickly, but you, your message and how you deliver it will ultimately be the determining factor. Capture your audience's attention by ensuring they're in the right place. This is a practice I call station identification, and I go over it in great detail in this video right here. Go ahead and check it out right now.